I wanna talk about shooting with a vision, meaning as you're capturing, understanding what you're gonna do with a set of images in post. Let's get into it. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends, my name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. So this video is about shooting with a vision. And to really kind of capture that, I'm gonna take you back to the actual shoot kind of explain what was going through my head as I was creating the images, and then we're gonna work through the images in post because I want you to see the entire picture and kind of where my mind was at at the time of the shoot. Let's start with point of capture. This is my buddy, Buddy. I actually met Buddy uh, in Pasadena. He's a street performer, and I met him with my friend David So. We were out kind of shooting street portraits. And I had a, we were doing a little challenge. I had a minute to photograph Buddy. And what's going through my head is I want to kind of create a series of images that I'm thinking I'll probably convert to black and white. And I noticed this wall kind of right next to him. So I actually positioned Buddy against that white wall, knowing that I could use it for not only a clean sort of backdrop, but then I could also potentially extend that background if I needed, which we're going to do with this image. So let me walk through how each of these were shot. This was shot, I believe, on like a 35 millimeter lens, either a 35 or a 50, at 1 500 of a second, f1.4 and ISO 200 on the Canon EOS R. And I can check which lens. It was the 50, okay? So I believe all of these were shot on the exact same lens, same setting, same everything. For this shot, I know I want a detailed shot of the hands kind of playing. On this shot, I know I want to kind of emphasize and use the the... I think this is a trumpet. Is this a trumpet? Anyway, I use the horn as kind of a framing object for Buddy, and then to have him actually playing and, and do a full portrait in this image. What I want you to pay attention to in this shot is that I framed him within the white, and that's gonna be key because I'm thinking in my head, if I frame him within the white, I can actually extend the background in post, and we're gonna do just that. Okay, so that's the post side, or sorry, that's the shooting side. Let's get to the post side now. This would be a great time to go ahead and just download the exercise files if you haven't already. I'm gonna include all three of these as DNGs you guys can download and follow along or load in whatever images you'd like. But going into the develop module, and by the way, it's in the description of the video. You all know how this works by now, I think. I'm gonna use the black and white mixer from Visual Flow, but don't worry, I am gonna walk through kind of what the settings are doing. For this image, I'm thinking street portrait, I'm thinking a bit of grain, something more poppy, and I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the bold portrait, and then I'm gonna stylize it with this street portrait option right here, which is gonna kind of amp up the, uh, the, the overall settings. We also have this cool black and white mixer uh, profile, but I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna add a bit of extra oomph and uh, you're not gonna see what the settings are because it's a profile. So let's keep it all in the settings. This is what I'm gonna go with for the entire set. I love this look. The last thing I'm gonna do is just add a bit of grain and I think I want this to be on the medium side. So I'm just gonna do medium film grain. Now, for those that aren't using, you know, Visual Flow Black and White Mixer, let me go ahead and just walk through the settings. So we're raising exposure a bit, adding contrast. We're doing a pretty deep pull on highlights, pulling highlights and whites down, raising the shadows, but keeping blacks low. So this makes it very punchy. Adding a bit of texture because it is a street portrait. I want there to be texture and detail, adding more clarity, more dehaze. The tone curve is a contrast boosting curve and a rather heavy one. So it's a heavy S curve that you're gonna dial in. And at any point, you guys can pause the video, dial in these settings, and you'll get to a similar look. The black and white mix puts a little emphasis on skin tones, brightening those up, while kind of pulling down everything that's not skin tones. There isn't any color grading being applied. Uh, sharpening is pretty high because, again, we're increasing detail. And that's roughly it. We're adding lens profile corrections. Um, there's grain set to 47, size 26. And that's it. So this is that final kind of black and white look, right? I'm gonna to go to the next image, hit previous. I'm gonna go ahead and also press R, get the trumpet kind of nice, nice like, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying right now. I, I, I really am just saying words, random words that mean nothing. I want the, uh, 
Trump had to be straight up and down is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just correcting that a little. Now, the other thing I want to do with this is I'm going to put a graduate filter at the top and just burn the top a little bit more so it's not quite so bright. It's a little bit too bright at the top of the frame. That looks good. And we're going to go to this image. I'm going to apply the same thing. You can press Control Shift C or Command Shift C, select all. So check all. Remove things like crop and spot removal and local adjustments because those are things that we want to apply on an individual basis, right? Then press Control Shift V or Command Shift V to paste it in. Now, once I get to here, you can start to see where I'm going with the image. I'm not actually going to change this crop at all yet because we're going to pull this into Photoshop. In fact, what I'm going to do real quick is make sure that the whites and everything are good across the board. See, this image looks like the whites are a little bit more white than the others. So what I might do is just pull up on the blacks a little just so I can get the whites down a little bit more. And then here, I'm going to bring the whites up. That looks about right. Maybe bring the highlight point and the actual whites up a little. And same thing here. I'm going to do the same thing. And what I'm aiming to do is just make it so that when I place these side by side, if I select all three and press N, that I have a nice cohesive look to the set, right? Again, I want you all to see what I'm thinking in my head as we are capturing. And I'm thinking this nice black and white set actually with square crops. Okay. While I adjust the crop, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and open this inside of Photoshop. So go ahead and select Edit In Photoshop. And let's come back to the Lightroom side while that is opening. I'm going to set my crops on the other two images. So pressing D to jump into the Develop module. I'm going to press R. Go ahead and select one to one. I'm going to bring this up to about the eye level, leaving a little bit of space there. No. Photoshop, I'd like to stay inside of Lightroom until you're done and ready. You're going to take forever anyway. I'm going to press I to also remove the information. Let's go ahead and select R. Again, crop this down. I want to kind of emphasize the fingers, have a tiny bit of the horn on the right side, buddy's face on the left. And now this should be loaded into Photoshop, right? This is the beauty of this entire thing. Watch. I'm going to press Control J or Command J to jump this to a new layer. And I'm going to start by kind of fixing some of the background stuff that I know is easy. I see this in the background. I'm like, ah, that's easy. I know I can fix that. Watch this. We're just going to use the patch tool. Press Shift J until you get to this tool right here. Then select the area. I'm using my mouse. I'm not even like using anything sophisticated right now. It's just my mouse to select the, the little blemish and then drag it over another area. If you get a little bit of uh, warble, I'm going to call it a warble. Uh, if you get that. You can switch to a different tool. Sometimes what happens in Photoshop is Photoshop has sometimes a hard time with grain. So if you notice that you're getting weird uh, kind of patching results or weird healing results, you can always add grain to the image after doing kind of your Photoshop work. So that's just a little note is you can kind of see that it, it, it's kind of like, ah, you know, I, I don't like the fact that you have added grain before I got to it. That's what Photoshop is, is thinking in its head. What I'm going to do instead is select that area, go shift backspace content aware, and I'm going to press OK. <laughs> and that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted Photoshop to grab a piece of the horn and just drop in a second horn. That's perfect. You know what? Let's just go back to the patch tool. Photoshop, you have failed me. I am. After that, I'm immediately going to sell whatever Adobe stock I have, because that little show right there just caused a 5% crash in Adobe stock. I'm just kidding. Why would that happen? That'd be funny if it kind of, I mean, kind of funny, not really funny. Okay. Now, so what else is Pi saying about vision? Well, when I shoot this against the white, I know that if I go into Photoshop, select the stuff that's not white, as long as it's against the edge, press shift backspace, content aware, press OK, that Photoshop is going to go, A, hey, I know what you wanted. You wanted to basically create a backdrop in the middle of the street. You dumb dumb. You can't do that, but I can. This is like late right now. I know it doesn't look it because of the lights and stuff, but it's late. I think you could probably tell it's getting late. Okay, with that done, now watch. 
I'm going to go up to the crop tool and I'm actually going to pull the top of this and extend it to a square. See, I'm kind of going with square crops on the other stuff, right? But before I let go, I'm going to select or before I press OK, select content aware and press the check mark. This is why we fixed the left and the right sides first, because now I'm going to tell Photoshop, hey, I actually want you to extend the entire frame up. And Photoshop goes, no problem. But the grain, though, I'm struggling with the grain a little bit. Photoshop's struggling with the grain a little bit. It's okay. We'll help it out. Okay, we're just going to select that and just kind of help blend that layer. I would normally do this, you know, pre-grain because I usually like to add grain as like a last step in case I don't want grain in a final. But um, I messed this one up, you know. So I might as well show you how to fix it if you mess it up. So this is good enough for the purpose of our little tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and save it out now. And we're going to go back to Lightroom. So with that image done and saved, I'm back in Lightroom. I'm going to glance at the other images real quick. This one, I'm going to raise my highlights just a bit more. Same thing with this one. Raise it just a bit more, maybe up to about here. Bring the white point up a little. Good. Now I can select all three of those images. I'm going to press N and let's go ahead and press shift tab. So N goes in the survey view. Shift tab is going to knock out all of the sidebars and windows and whatnot. Now this was my vision for this set at the time of capture. And it's important to have that in your mind as you're creating a set. This is how you create kind of a full story. It's how you create a, a set of images that are going to go into an album or maybe wall art frames. But to know kind of where you're going to take something in post is going to help you that much more when you document. And that's why when I saw the white wall, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I knew where I wanted to take it in post. And I knew for this last shot, okay, I don't have the right lens or the right space to get to the square crop here. But knowing what I could do in Photoshop, I knew that I could knock that out and get easily to the square crop on this side. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, I would love for you to like the video. That means thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of great videos going up each and every day from amazing creators. So if you want to be notified, subscribe and turn on notifications. In the meantime, I do get a lot of my ideas for these tutorials from your guys' comments, which I do read. So comment below. Let me know what you guys would like to learn next. In the meantime, if you guys want to follow me at PyJirsa. That is my handle on Instagram. You guys can also check out our complete workshops at srloungeworkshops.com. See you guys next time. Peace.